Hi class. Today we're going to be learning how to graph radical functions. Uh, we're going to start with the basic idea of uh, kind of our square root function if y equals the square root of x. Uh, if we make an xy table here, then I can plug in, oh, let's just start with our basic negative 2 to positive 2, and let's see what happens. We might need to adjust this. So if x was negative 2, the square root of negative 2, if you remember, if we have a square root of a negative number, uh, these are imaginary. So we actually aren't going to have any negative x's on our square root function. Uh, the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. I don't know what the square root of 2 is without a calculator. It's some decimal. Um, but if I think about the next square root that I do know, I know the square root of 4 is 2. And then the next square root that I do know is 9. The square root of, oops, 9 is 3. So I can graph these points on my graph, um, except, well, <laughs> if we look, we have some transformations. So uh, instead of starting with the basic function, we're actually going to jump into transformations here. Um, so this minus 3 is going to move down 3. This plus 2 is going to move left 2 based on our transformations that we've, we've learned in the past. So if on my graph I go uh, left 2 and down 3, left 2, down 1, 2, 3, and I put my starting point, that's kind of my new origin, which means I can use these points, but they're, they're going to be over-ups is what I call them. So they're movements in the x and y direction from my shifted point, um, from negative 2, negative 3. So if I look, I'm not going to use any of these values here. I'm going to start with 0. So 0, 0 just means that that point is going to still be there. <laughs> uh, if I move over 1 to the right, positive 1, I'm going to go up 1. And then I go back to that same point, negative 2, negative 3 each time here. If I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm going to go up 2. So I'm going from the negative 2, negative 3 point. And if I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, up 3, I end up with that point there. So square root function looks like this. And now this, of course, is the one with transformations. If it was just our basic function, this whole thing would just be um, coming out of 0, 0, but would have the same properties. Our domain and our range, if you notice, Domain and range are not going to be all real numbers because the arrows don't go forever in both directions, just one direction. So if we think about this starting point of negative 2, negative 3, and the fact that we have an arrow on the right end, um, that's going to kind of help us make our domain. So domain are the x values. My domain starts with a negative 2, and then it goes all the way to the right to positive infinity. Now remember, we always use a rounded bracket for infinity because we can't actually equal the number. And then for negative 2, that number does exist, so we want a square bracket. It's not an open circle or a hole or an asymptote or anything weird. Uh, and then similarly for our range, we're going to start with the point negative 3 for the y value. And it goes up, so it's going to go up towards positive infinity. All right, let's do the next example. So again, uh, we have a function that's translated one to the left. We have two up and I have a vertical uh, stretch of two. So when we have a vertical stretch, that's going to multiply uh, y by two because it's stretching in the vertical or the y direction. So I can still kind of base everything off of this table that we had before, 0, 1, 4, 9, square root of 0, square root of 1, square root of 4, and square root of 9. And then I can take that vertical stretch of 2, this one, and multiply these values of y by that value of 2. So if I multiply each one of these by 2, I get 0, 2, 4, and 6. 
So really I'm just doubling those Y values here. Uh, I still need to do my starting point, which from my transformations is gonna be one left and two up. So there's my starting point. And then these are gonna be my over ups or uh, downs if they were negative over X and Y movements from that starting point at negative one comma two. So from there, I've got zero, zero. That just means that point exists. If I go over one, I'm gonna go up two. If I go over one, two, three, four, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four. If I go over nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I'm gonna go up one, two, three, four, five, six. So we still have that nice curve it's just gonna be a little bit taller than the other one. Uh, again, our starting point was at negative one, positive two. It's kind of nice to write that point because then when you're writing your domain, you've already thought about what that X and Y value are, where it starts. So domain starts with a negative one and goes to the right to infinity. And the Y values, the range starts at two and goes up to positive infinity. <clears throat> All right, at this point, if you wanted to pause the video and try the next two problems on your own, or at least the next problem, and then um, check with me and I'll, and see if you can do it. Okay, so um, I'm just gonna do number three. I'll leave number four for you guys. You guys can check in the calendar for number four and the filled in notes. Uh, but we'll do number three. We'll see what happens with this negative, uh, which is gonna be a reflection over the x-axis or in the vertical direction. And then of course, I also have a four to the right and the one down for my starting point. So if I go one, two, oh, and then my over ups, <laughs> getting a, ahead of myself. So the same values, just the basic square root of x values, zero, one, four, nine, and zero, one, two, three for the square roots. So I go four to the right, one, two, three, four, and down one for my starting point. And then with that reflection, it's gonna sort of work the same as our um, vertical stretch for the last problem. It gets multiplied to the Y values. So I'm gonna multiply all these Y values by a negative one. And if you think about what that does to those numbers, it makes them all negative. So now I'm gonna go over zero, still zero, now when I go over one to the right, I'm gonna go down one. When I go over one, two, three, four, I'm gonna go down two. And my nine's not gonna fit on this graph, so I don't need to worry about it. All right, so my domain, that starting point of positive four, negative one, my domain's gonna go from, let me erase this here. My domain's gonna go from positive four, it's still going to the right, so positive infinity in the x direction. But my range, if you notice, it starts with negative one, but it goes to negative infinity. And when we write interval notation, we need to go from the lowest value to the highest value. So I need it to go from negative infinity to negative one. All right, and then number four, try it on your own and then check with the filled in notes on the calendar. So now we're gonna look at some cube root functions. Uh, they're going to be similar, but, uh, but I mean, fairly different. So let's first, let's um, look at, oops, I need to pause. Sorry about that, my pen was not working. All right, so we're going to start just kind of exploring what that cubed root of x looks like, just the basic function without any transformations. So if I start with, let's do negative one, zero, and one. Now, unlike the square root function, I can have a cube root of negative one because I can take negative one cubed and I get a negative value. So the cubed root of negative one is negative one. The cubed root of zero is still zero and the cubed root of one is one. If you notice, we don't have any imaginary numbers for a cubed root. Uh, and then I don't know what the cubed root of two is. If I wanna think about the next cube value, uh, two cubed is eight. So my next value in my table, I'm gonna use negative and positive eight for my X values. The cubed root of negative eight is negative two and the cubed root of eight is two. And then this is this would be my basic function, but we have some transformations here. We have a movement 
oops, one to the left and four down. So we're going to start at negative one, negative four, negative one, negative four. And then I'm going to do these over ups. So over and up or down, because we have some negatives, uh, from this starting point. So from my negative one, negative four, if I go over one to the right, I'm gonna go up one. If I go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'm gonna go up two. And then if I go over one to the left, so if X is negative one, I'm gonna go down one. And over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down two. And if you notice, this is a definitely looks different than the square root function and it goes forever in both directions and i mean it kind of looks like it's going to flatten out but it doesn't it just keeps going up and down slowly but surely so our domain and our range for these are just going to be all real numbers negative infinity to infinity negative infinity to infinity there's no starting point it's just a continuous function all the way just keeps going. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do number six. Let's kind of review what's going to happen with that two out in front. It's going to be the exact same steps. We just have a different over up pattern here. So uh, we have, let's see, one to the right and a three up, and we have a vertical stretch of two. So again, these are going to be my starting point over one to the right and three up. And then I have my over ups, negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. Again, remember those are our perfect cube values. So then I, when I cube root those, I get negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And then I'm gonna take that vertical stretch of two and multiply it to my up values, just like I did with the square root function, just like we do with any function really. So I'm going to get negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And I'm going to do those over up values from my starting point at 1, 3. So if I go over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. And over 1, down 2, 0, 0, over 1, up 2, and over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So we still have that, that kind of S shape, just a little bit taller, and my domain and range is still all real numbers. That's not going to change for any cube root functions. Okay, uh, last example that I'm going to do with you guys, and again, you guys can try number eight. Uh, if you want to pause the video now and try number seven and then see how you do, that might be a good idea. All right, the only difference uh, here is that we have this reflection. So all of my y values are going to end up being negative. So I've got two to the right and five down. So one, two to the right, one, two, three, four, five down. My over ups. I've got my negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. That's negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two for my basic cube root function. But then I'm gonna multiply all those values by a negative one because of that reflection. So everything's gonna switch signs for the up values. And if I graph those, well, let's see, I go over to the left, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm gonna go up two because negative two times negative one is positive. Uh, over one, up one to the left, over one, down one to the right, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down two. So we've got this function here, oops, and through the point. Sorry, that one got a little messy. Okay, and that's it for today. Try number eight and then uh, check it with the filled in notes on the calendar. Thank you.